thank you all for being here and for your good work. Uh, let me make a couple of really simple points. I know your world is a complicated one, the dockets, the agenda, but here are some really simple points. Uh, the United States Congress must confirm Commissioner Rosenworcel. She's been a leader in identifying the homework gap. She's been a tireless advocate for public safety officials. And she's been a leading thinker at the FCC on creative ways to update our spectrum policy both for both licensed and unlicensed use. She is a distinguished member of the FCC. And her confirmation was part of an agreement that led to confirmation of Commissioner O'Reilly. I'm looking at you, sir. And I know you were not part of this agreement. <laughs> that, that's the best part. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm looking at you because you are a member of this commission, and you would not be there but for this agreement. And uh, I'm calling on the majority leader very simply to keep his promise. Number two. Uh, on the set-top box issue, uh, Chairman Wheeler, I want to really express my gratitude to you on behalf of the consumers of Connecticut who will stand to save millions of dollars as a result of the rule that you are proposing. And again, to be very simple, I hope not overly simple, there's a law that requires it. I'm a law enforcement guy. <laughs> the first and foremost duty of anybody in public office is to enforce the law. If it's unenforced, it undermines the credibility and trust of everybody in that law. And the set-top box order that you have issued very simply enforces a law that has been unenforced since the 1990s, as we all know. Uh, it will save not only Connecticut consumers, but consumers around the country, millions of dollars. There must be FCC oversight. Voluntary standards got us into this mess. Only reliable and consistent enforcement law will help preserve consumers' pocketbooks. And uh, I want to enter into the record uh, editorials from some of the newspapers that have expressed themselves on this issue, most recently New York Times of today, uh, which very emphatically came down on the side of consumers. This issue is a classic inside the beltway versus the people of America issue. Inside the beltway, there's this hand wringing and my goodness, what are we doing? Outside the beltway, there is no question that consumers deserve to save money through more choice and more competition. That's the way markets work. So uh, I am leading to a question here, but uh, I want to express the, the strong view that this rule is needed and deserved by the consumers of America. And I'd like to just open it to you, sir, to explain perhaps what the numbers are here in terms of savings. These uh, set-top boxes are dollar devourers. They simply suck money out of consumers' pockets without any real need. And what are the numbers in terms of the potential savings? To well, thank you very much, uh, Senator. Um, you, you know, um, um, I was talking to Senator McCaskill earlier about um, the study that she did on cable pricing and the consumer experience of cable consumers, and how one of the major findings of that was the surprise. Oh my goodness, I've got this additional charge. This isn't what they were telling me on the ads and everything else, but there's this additional charge. Um, you and Senator Markey did some great research that came up that showed us about $230 a month per household. Um, you do the math um, on that, 
and it's about a billion six hundred million dollars every 30 days. Without any benefit to consumers. Without any choice. And by the way, the, I, I would just, I don't mean to quibble, but the benefit is you are going to pay this or the money that you spend on your cable subscription is down the tubes. <laughs> so so it, is, it is beyond that. Yes, you get you, you get a result from your, from your payment because you're being held hostage. Um, and, and as Commissioner Rosenworcel has said repeatedly, um, it's time to do something about this. Um, we respect greatly the various corporations and trade associations that have come to see us and we try to work with them. But the Congress gave us a mandate of a responsibility to consumers. And our job must be to fulfill that mandate. Thank you very much. My time has expired. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I, uh, I offered, I guess I didn't wait for the potential objection <coughs> by entering those editorials into the record, but uh, if there's no objection, I'll uh, have them part of the record. Without objection.